Should we use solid Romex wire like they do in building houses for our AC circuits and our cargo trailer conversion? Or would we prefer to use stranded wire in our cargo trailer conversion for our AC circuits? We get that question a lot and we're fixing to talk about it. Hey everybody, Bill and Deb. Hi there. Hope you're having a wonderful day today. We're having a good day, aren't we? Yeah, I'm ready for this February, I mean this um, <laughs> winter Florida to be done. The, the Florida winter to be Florida done. Florida winter. Yeah. yeah. It's done. I'm tired of it. It's not uh, really cold. We got out in the 40s last night, but you know, hey, uh, at least it's not raining cats and dogs for hours on end like, like it, it did was for the a couple other day. Of days. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's true. But anyway, on to uh, our subject for today. Uh, we do get this question a lot. People will ask us, you know, uh, what do you think we should use? Should we use a solid core, you know, solid wiring like they do in a house, which would be like what they call Romex wiring? The flat wire. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually. I each, call it flat wire. <laughs> each, each different wire is round, but it's in a flat casing. Or uh, use stranded wire. And so we're going to talk about that here for a little bit. And uh, here again, let's say this at the very onset of this discussion. We are not going to tell you what we think you should do. No. All, no. all we can do is tell you what we did. Yeah. And that's all and we're going to say. And the reasons why we did. Very good. That's exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. We're simply going to tell you what we did and the reasons why we did what we did. Right? Exactly. Yeah. All right, well, let's start this off this way. Now, I don't have uh, some Romex wire to show you, but you all have seen that. If you've been around job sites at all, you know what Romex wire is, you know. And it's, uh, you know, the wiring is a solid core type wiring. And then the other kind of wiring would be like stranded wire. Now, this is, and I use this term a lot, and some people asked me the other day, here a while back, not the other day, but they said, Bill, you call it drop cable. What is what is drop cord? Well, it's basically contractor's extension cord. Right. Yeah. And this is a number 12. This is a three-wire, 12-gauge uh, drop cord, as as contractors refer to it. This is a 25-foot long one. We've had this particular cable for years and years. A long time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we've used it on job sites, construction sites, you know, constantly, because we both, uh, you know, we're in the building industry. And, uh, in fact, Deb used to go out and help me install ceramic tile, didn't you? And that yeah. was my cord. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to run my mixer. But here, here's the thing. <laughs> Think about this, and, and, and then we'll elaborate a little bit more. See that? See what you can do with that, you know, like And at that. the end of the day, what do we do with it? Yeah, yeah. Tie it in a knot, you know, or whatever. You I, can't even tie it in a knot today. I couldn't even tie a knot. I, <laughs> see, I can tie it in a knot. I can do this. I can do that. You can throw it on the floor and run a wheelbarrow right. over it. Right, yeah. Or a pickup truck will run <laughs> over it, or a big truck will run over it. Uh, then when you're done at the end of the day, after you've, uh, you know, abused it during the day, and you it's roll it got up. mud all over it. You just roll it up and throw it in the back of the pickup. Yeah, you're tired. and then you throw your tools and stuff on top of that. <laughs> yes. You know. And yet it continues to work. Continues to keep on going. Yeah. You know, and that's that's the thing about mm -hmm. this kind of wiring. And like I say, this is a 12 gauge. I wouldn't buy anything less than a 12 gauge. And you can get this kind of stuff in anywhere from. 16 gauge probably even smaller than that but 16 gauge on up and you can get it in a variety of links you know uh, but anyway this is uh this is what you call drop cord tape a drop cord cable and what we ended up doing with our trailer and here i want you to keep this in mind before we move on in a house sure they use a solid core wire in a house like romex cable in a house that's because that wire isn't being vibrated yeah if it is you've got issues right it's, <laughs> it's just sitting there you know, but remember these things and what are these these things they are rolling earthquakes now some fo folks think that i came up with that term well no i didn't come up with that term uh, i heard that term when we were first uh, interested in uh, doing this kind of thing years ago before we ever started building anything we watched several videos and there's this one uh, gentleman that every time when he would come on he'd talk about the fact that RVs are rolling earthquakes and so yes they are 
So you think about that, you know, with the solid wiring in the trailer. Now, I know that uh, they use it in the RV, RV industry all the time. That's what they do. Um, but then again, now and then you hear of issues, you know, because of that. So what we decided to do, we used wiring similar to this. And what we use is what they call SOW cable or S SJOOW cable. Uh, you're probably looking at an example of what's available on Amazon right now. And you can get it in various gauges. Uh, well, we got most of it from a re actual electrical supply We house. did. We ordered one roll from Amazon, and then we got another roll because somebody made a mistake or somebody miscalculated. <laughs> <laughs> and what we started off first, we bought a 200-foot roll. For this trailer. For this trailer. You would think that would be yeah. more than right. enough. And, uh, and, and I told Deb, you know, she says, well, I think you ought to get more. I think it's going to be more than that, you know. <laughs> and, uh, uh, nah, that's going to be plenty. Well, we ended up getting another 100 feet. But uh, we got it to, to our first uh, roll that we bought. We bought through a local uh, warehouse in uh, northwest Arkansas that uh, caters to contractors. And they had it in large spools. And then when we had to order the other, when we were somewhere else, we had to order it from Amazon. Right. But it's available out there either through Amazon. And actually, the price at Amazon was a little bit better even after shipping. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. So, but this is what we used. And we used it mainly for that reason. Because we know that these things shake and, and shatter going down the road. And... You know, since we live in this thing, this is our home. Let us stress this again, over and over again. We're in this thing 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Uh, since we started with this particular trailer, we have well over 10,000 miles on this trailer. And believe me, we've been on some rough roads. I mean, but using this heavier roads. wire is why you had to go with a certain depth of electric box. Which is what we're going to talk about here in just a little bit. We're going to elaborate <laughs> Sorry. a little bit more. <laughs> That's what um, happens when he doesn't tell me exactly right. what we're saying. <laughs> now, what we also did, and here again, let me say this again. We are not telling you that you should do this. We are not mm -hmm. telling you that what we did was the right way. We're simply telling you what we actually did and why we did it. We did not run any wiring in the walls. There is not a single wire embedded in the walls in this trailer. Uh, all of the wiring is in, as we've talked about before, all of the wiring is in chaseways or to make that one particular person happy that didn't like the fact that I used the term chaseways. All of the wiring is in raceways and all the raceways are... Uh, behind panels that are behind our storage areas that run all the way around the top and uh, but not a single wire is embedded in the wall uh, not just our ac circuits but also our 12 volt circuits the same way and if we needed to we could literally get to every inch of wiring in this trailer if we needed to now on to the next thing none of our boxes none of our receptacles we didn't put any of the receptacles in the wall either, uh, mainly because in order to make them fit flush in the wall, uh, you'd have to use shallower boxes, you know. And here again, folks, think about this. When you are uh, running, let's say if you're running uh, four or five receptacles on one circuit, well, the normal thing you're going to do is you're going to take the wires down to this one receptacle. You're going to tie on to the uh, uh, neutral and the... Uh, positive. It's not the positive. Hot. The hot. <laughs> I'm thinking DC and AC and it's all... I'm wanting to call it uh, positive when it's the hot wire. So you're tying on to the, to the uh, neutral wire terminal and the hot wire terminal in addition to the ground terminal with your ground wire that runs in that wiring because it's three wire and then if you're going to go to another receptacle on the same circuit what do you do you tie on to the other uh, uh, positive and neutral wires <laughs> what's wrong with hot. me today hot. thank you yeah, you're welcome well i need to look at you and think <laughs> hot is that what it is? That's what it is. <laughs> Here I go. I get my DCs and ACs mixed up. 
<laughs> but what you're doing is you're tying on to the hot and neutral terminals on the other side of the receptacle to go on down to the next receptacle. So now you've got six wires coming in, which will be your ground wire, your neutral wire, and your hot wire. You're tying in to the three different terminals, and then you're tying into those terminals again on the other side of the same receptacle in order to carry the power down to the next one. So now you have a total of six wires in that box. Now, if you have a box that's only about that deep, man, you're cramming an awful lot of wiring in such a small box. And the chances of having an issue because everything is so close to each other can be a real problem when you don't have enough room to tuck anything in. We opted, we wanted to go with as deep a box as possible. And uh, the boxes we went with uh, was three inches deep. Now, we would rather have went with a three and a half inch deep uh, box, but we couldn't find them anywhere. Yeah. at that time. This was during the C-word thing going on and stuff was hard to find. And we were very fortunate just to find a supplier that had enough of those particular boxes to do what we needed to do. So we, all of our receptacles are in build-outs. There's not a single receptacle that's mounted in a wall that would necessitate a shallow box. Unless, of course, if you were to build out a medallion, which would bring, you know, allow you to use a deeper box, then you could do that. But then we come up to the next situation, which concerns uh, us a lot, and which is another reason why none of our wires are embedded in the walls no matter what. Uh, we've seen where some, uh, you know, will, will uh, insulate their walls, and the walls are, uh, you know, one inch deep, so they'll go with one inch foam board. Uh, that'll come out even with the metal studs. Then they'll run horizontal furring strips, you know, spaced roughly two feet apart. And the whole idea behind that is then to run another layer of three quarter inch foam board over those metal studs in between those horizontal furring strips uh, for additional insulation, which is exactly what we did here. But then what some will opt to do in order to run their wiring embedded in the walls, they will actually run it down like right on top of one of those furring strips and then just cut their foam board insulation a little short and then they'll go ahead and put their wall covering over that their paneling or whatever they're doing and then the concern that we personally have is here you are you're running down the road again you're in a rolling earthquake and you've got these this wiring running in the wall uh, there's one point where it's actually rubbing right up against that metal stud and eventually over time, you know, it may, may not ever happen, but it could happen. Eventually over time, you know, that could rub through. And then all of a sudden you've got an issue where you've got wires grounding out against your metal studs. And you'll pick up on that real quick. If you don't blow a breaker, you'll pick up on that real quick when you plug it in to get power. And then you happen to touch something you shouldn't touch and you get bit. You know, like that. So, uh, and that's just the the least that could happen right there. So anyway, those are our concerns. So that's why we did it the way we did. We can literally, like I say, uh, all of our wiring is in raceways, chaseways, however you want to call that. Uh, and it's all easy to get to by simply removing a few panels here and there. And we, like I say, we went to the extra effort in order to uh, do build outs so all of our receptacles are in build outs so that we could utilize deep boxes <sighs> but that's how we did it that's how and we did this it. is why we did it okay. and we've been on some really really bumpy roads and we haven't had a loose connection or anything in all this time now something else that we did which is not necessarily what you need to do um well, none of this is what you need to do. You do it the way you think you, you want to do it. You know, here again, I need to stress that one more time again and again. Um, we also went with uh, number 12 gauge, 12 gauge wiring in everything. Even the smallest wire on our DC circuits that go to our lights and everything is all 12 gauge. Yeah, it's overkill. It is. Because in your uh, standard receptacles that are, you know, in the walls and, you know, not in the walls because we did build outs, um, you know, we're never going to be pulling 20 amps 
through them, but we did run number uh, or 12 gauge wire through all that simply because I just believe it overkill and the difference in cost between the 14 gauge three wire SJOW cable and the uh, and the 12 gauge was was very little. There wasn't much difference in the price between the two. 14 gauge is easier to work with because it's not as big. What we ended up doing because we ran 12 gauge wire, all of our receptacles are actually 20 amp receptacles rather than 15 amp receptacles and the main reason why we had to go with 20 amp 20 amp receptacles they have larger terminals on them that will accommodate the larger 12 gauge wiring and that's why we did and we paid a little bit more for them you know to get the to get those receptacles but anyway that's just our little injection into this discussion <laughs> y'all do it the way you you think you need to do it but uh we just have an issue ourselves in our own trailer with uh with uh using solid core wire that could eventually create an issue down the road uh, as far as maybe you know if I've, I've heard of some where they've actually broke you know due to you know constant vibration when they're traveling down the road and things like that um and uh, here again, uh, you can't uh, you can't you know do that <laughs> day in and day out with that other wiring, and then at the end of the day after you've ran wheelbarrows across it and everything, and then throw it in your truck and then throw your tools on top of it. And we did that and never thought a thing about it. And we always expected it to work the next day when we pulled everything back out. That is correct. <laughs> and it did. <laughs> all right. I don't know. I'm probably going to get a lot of comments about this one. That's all right. You know, hey, this is Topic yeah, Tuesday. <laughs> it's Topic Tuesday. So anyway, uh, y'all do what you, uh, what you uh, think you need to do in your situation. And yes, the way we did it was a little bit more expensive. I will say this. We haven't had a minute's issue with any wiring whatsoever. Okay. We've got more walkthroughs. Coming up. And a whole bunch more walkthroughs. We have an announcement up. to make Saturday, so be sure and watch that video. Yeah, well, now if someone's watching this three years from now, hey, well, okay. they'll be looking for the announcement <laughs> on Saturday. Saturday, December 10th. Or yeah. is it the 9th? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> of 2023 it's either the 9th or 10th saturday whenever that is i don't even know what today's date is is it the fifth yes it's our our happy anniversary melinda and kevin yeah <laughs> our daughter and son-in-law happy anniversary now i gotta send her a text <laughs> i'll never forget that day that was an interesting day when they got married yeah. anyway and uh i was looking at the old wedding pictures you know of the wedding that day and, and haven't changed a bit have we I just thought, man, that guy was really handsome back then. Who? No wonder. Kevin? No. No, me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and you were you were pretty darn good looking too. Yeah. I did good. <laughs> Still pretty darn good looking. <laughs> it's time to cut this video off. <laughs> this is Bill and Deb with I Ride Tiny House Adventures. You know exactly what we're gonna say. We're not camping. We are living. Y'all get out there. Do some living. We'll see you again soon. Bye bye now. Bye bye.